You know, uh, one of our people lost their mother. We had the funeral on Tuesday. On Wednesday morning, my wife prayed for me before I left. It's very good to pray in the morning. You never know what's facing you that day. I got on the Q train. Now, what you may not know is that from uh, Canal Street to DeKalb, there's about eight minutes where you're over the East River. And you're really trapped. If something happens, uh, there's nothing really anybody can do for you. And uh, you don't want to pull that uh, emergency cord because that'll just trap you even more. You'll be stalled out on, on, over, over the East River. And uh, you can't get the sliding side doors open. Uh, they come open automatically. If you pry them open, what are you going to do? Jump in the water? And uh, a lot of people don't know that, that those end doors are locked on certain cars. And the reason they're locked is that there's a sharp turn just as you go into DeKalb in Brooklyn. And uh, if some little boy was standing between the cars, he would probably drop because the gap is so wide on a long car like that. So here I'm, I'm sitting next to this, uh, this door and I don't know that it's locked. And, and I, I'm looking at some things, and you know, people do light reading on, on, the, uh, on the subway. But I want to tell you something. The Bible is not light reading. The Bible is, uh, is like uh, the, your soul. This is uh, the Hebrew in uh, Tanakh, uh, and this is the uh, Yiddish in the Brun and uh, the uh, the... Uh, name of this particular uh, uh, Bible is Haderic Hamishikist Yid. Haderic Hamishikist Yid. And uh, this was copyrighted back in 2009. And uh, a Hasidic guy came to the Lord. Uh, and he's now a supporter of this ministry. Somebody from Crown Heights. It's not light reading, friend. And, and you know what? There I was sitting next to that locked door, not realizing the imminent danger. And all of a sudden, these two African-American girls come running into the car. He's going to kill us. He's going to kill us. And they try to open the door. And of course, it's locked. And they're banging on the door. Open the door. We're going to die. We're all going to die. And, and everybody in the car starts cr crowding around me. We're all, we're all back there now. And, uh, you know, I, I had a certain peace because I'm ready to meet the Lord. But these people were not. It was stark terror. Stark terror. Like, I'm going to hell. I'm not ready to meet God. And uh, at a time like that, uh, there's all kinds of questions that go through your mind. You remember, for instance, the Parkland shooting where the guy goes in there with uh, an AK-15 and he's got uh, five magazines. He shoots 150 rounds. He kills 17 people. 17 people. Think about what I'm saying, friend. And 17 other people were wounded. And, uh, and, and uh, you wonder, which car is he in? And what's he got? What kind of weapon? Uh, is, is he walking this way? Uh, is this like, uh, is somebody dead already? Uh, should we run? How, we're, we don't have any place to run. How fast do we get to the next station. Now, the, the Q train goes real slow. It's about eight minutes across the East River. And, and uh, do, we, do we pull the emergency cord? No, no, that's the worst thing we could do. And, and, and how are how, how, how the police going to get to us? And, and, and then I, you know, I'm thinking about the deputy down there in Parkland near Fort Lauderdale. What did he do? He took defensive cover. And all the time those rounds were going off and he knew children were dying. Instead of taking his service revolver and going in there and confronting the guy, he's cowering behind a police car. And, and I'm wondering, you know, can, is the police going to help us here, you know? And, and, uh, and, and at a time like that, you need straight answers. Amen? You need right answers. You want answers. Amen. And uh, at a time like that, you don't care if the policeman's mother is Jewish or, uh, or uh, Asian or Hispanic or uh, uh, African-American. You don't care. 
All you care about is does he have his service revolver? Will he aggressively come in here and take this guy out? And that's what was going through our mind. And, 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 and really what I'm talking about here is the reason you need an orthodox Bible. You need a Bible that will give you straight, right answers. Answers that have to do with your eternal soul. Life or death answers. And some of these Messianic Jews are mad at me because, you know, well, look, my mother's Jewish and I got a little education, so why can't I throw, throw together a, a uh, Messianic Bible? And they think, oh, yeah, he's trying to sell his Bible. No, let me, let me set that straight right now. You want what I consider the most orthodox New Testament, the Weymouth New Testament in modern speech. Why? Because he puts his finger on the main culprit of, that's going to keep you from getting saved. It's this word merit. Uh, Romans 9.32. They, they were pursuing a righteousness which uh, should arise not from faith, but from what they regarded as merit. And this is why many Jewish people died. And, and so we're talking about the Zohe earning Maasim. Zion, Kaf, Vav, Tav. Pursue this, or even if you... Even if you think you can attain it, pursue it, and you will miss Moshiach Tzikenu and Haye Olam. So the Bible has got to give you orthodox. Here, let me show you the word orthodox. Uh, first of all, let me show you this, this really bad word here. Uh, we should all be Zahe, meaning to merit, to see the coming of Moshiach. This is uh, what you hear all the time. And... Uh, what did Johannan say? I don't have enough merit to carry his sandals or untie his sandals. Uh, what, did, what did the uh, centurion say? Uh, Lord, I did not deserve to have you come under my roof. What, what, uh, it says the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? So uh, the, the, the righteous will, will they, look, you have to say, I only did my duty. I am an unworthy servant. Get that straight, friend. Get that straight. Because you'll never make it otherwise. Here's the word I'm talking about today. Orthodoxia. Ortho means straight, right. In the crisis of existence, we need ortho answers. Your Bible has been, better be ortho, ortho my, my friend. It, it better be. Uh, and, and here, here's a Bible. Oh, yeah, look at this. The Orthodox Study Bible. Why, it says it's Orthodox right on the cover. But then when you get into Romans chapter 7, uh, you find out that uh, there's a problem. Twisting this scripture, the commentator says, man is not sinful by nature. The Orthodox Church, quote-unquote Orthodox Church, rejects any teaching that man has a sin nature or that man is depraved to the core because we are created in the image of God. There's an indelible goodness in our nature that can never be undone while we can become immersed in sin. We know that it's still not part of our nature, but a foreign force that dwells in us. Thus, sin is what we do, not what we are. That is wrong, my friend. You are a depraved, blind creature. Yes. Look at this word right here. Who is Iver, like my servant. The, even the Jewish people are blind. We're not even talking about the guy of the uh, Gentile sinners. The Jewish people are blind. But the servant in Isaiah 53 is not blind. Even in his kever grave, he sees light. He sees his seed. He sees. He has vision. He's not blind. Friend, you are blind in trespasses and sins. Blindness, this is your problem. You can never have merit because you're blind. I'm talking about depravity and, and this ontological blindness. I'm referring to the very nature of human existence. The Messiah, in contrast to the blind servant Israel, the Messiah can see Israel is blind. And the Orthodox study Bible is not orthodox. We have to have straight answers. It's not giving you a straight answer. Look, my grandfather had glaucoma. My first cousin has glaucoma. She's had multiple eye operations. 
She, 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 this blindness was passed down. Yes, you have blindness from grandfather Adam. Don't tell me about your merit. Don't tell me about your good nature. Yes, it's true. Uh, man is made in the image of God, but that image has to be restored. And when Mashiach comes in, who is the image of God, he begins something called sanctification or Kedusha. And, 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 and the Bible is, is not uh, light reading for a summer beach day. Uh, and if you don't grasp your true spiritual condition, then you show that you really are blind. And, and, that, and that's what we're talking about today. And, and this idea that you're not blind and then you can merit salvation, this comes from um, the uh, Babylonian Talmud. If they, the Israelites, are meritorious, Zion Kaf Vav, he will come with the clouds of heaven. Uh, look at that. Uh, look at AFII.org forward slash AFII.pdf page 1155. Uh, so, friend, I, I'm telling you, don't get this Bible. It's not orthodox. I'm sorry. It's not orthodox. Uh, and and, and, and I, I, I have to tell you that uh, as an actor, I know how important the su supernatural entrance and the supernatural exit of the Messiah is. If, you're, uh, if you mess up an actor's entrance or his exit, you've really messed up his performance. And Mashiach uh, was born of Ha'alma. Now look, when I did the Yiddish for the Habadniks, uh, I made sure that I put Alma there in the Masur Sagat Olah. Nisht Hasuna Gahat Yunga Basula Madel. That defines what an Alma is. A not married young Basula Madel. That's what she was. And, and that's one of the best attested things in the Breed Hadashah. A supernatural ent uh, entrance. Then we see a supernatural exit. Yes, uh, he stood up alive on the third day according to the scriptures. Now, you, if you mess up one little word, kof nun hey, you mess up the entire uh, 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 Logos Christology of the Tanakh. Kof nun hey. We're saying the Barinosh. Rashi calls this figure in Daniel chapter 7, verse 13, uh, the Messiah. Th this one that all peoples will pay Lamed Het, serve as deity, through Shad though, though Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego will not serve as deity, the idols of Nebuchadnezzar, meaning he's not an idol. This Barinosh did meet Gashem, he did materialize as a real human being. This Barinosh was seen by eyewitnesses when he did materialize in their midst in a, in a locked room, Yohanan 20, verse 19. Uh, then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he disappeared from their sight, Luke 24, 31. He dematerialized. And also he apparently dematerialized from the linen wrappings and the mummy-like shroud wrappings. And then he materialized and then he placed the head wrapping neatly where his head had been. So it, it's not merely a, an empty tomb in Johannine chapter 20, verse 3, but uh, rather this or something similar happened, causing the Shaliach to come to faith just by looking at the shrouds, the Takrahim. Now, friend, you cannot mess that up. You cannot mess that up. And, and, and your translation is an embarrassment. I don't care if your mother was Jewish. If you mess that up, uh, and, and I, I'm saying this uh, for a reason. Now look here. Here's a guy, Alexander Harkavy. Now when you look at his Yiddish Hebrew um, uh, dictionary, you see this word for property, kinyan, property right here. And, and, and an owner, a, pr a proprietor. And here's the word, ein gentimer, an owner. Now he knows that this word is related to this word, kinyan, kof nun yod final nun. So he knows that kof nun he is really, uh, it, it's, it's really about the, 
the, uh, the fact that, that we're not talking about a creator here. Uh, we're talking about an owner. Eve did not create Cain. Cain looks like the word for possess or, or acquire or own. In chapter 14, uh, it looks like all these people ha have all this possession uh, and who's going to give tithe to who? But you know what? It's really all about the, possess the possessor of heaven and earth, that God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. You can't get that wrong, friend. You can't get it wrong. Now, this same guy, Alexander Harkavy, he did a translation of the entire Tanakh. Look what he has for uh, uh, Song of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 8. There are three score queens, four score concubines, and virgins. Friend, if Alamot or plural Alma is, is, is virgin here, it's virgin in, in chapter uh, 714 of, of Isaiah. And so this is the kind of thing I'm talking about. When you go through uh, Kof Nun Hay, you will see in every instance, in every instance, it's talking about uh, uh, something, it's a commercial term having to do with what you have, what you own, what you acquire, or, or your wealth. Uh, uh, now let's go to this very word, very important word, Pelamidhet, meaning iron base dalit. Uh, it says uh, this word palak that uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego will not palak idols, but all peoples will palak the Mashiach. We're having we're talking about the Latin word cultus, which means the care of the deity. Now look, if I'm a servant. Of, uh, of, of King David and I, he wants a kosher a side of beef I have to take it to him and serve him but we're not talking about serving a human being we're talking about the Kohanim in the Beis HaMikdash serving God giving God what he wants and buddy you better do it right remember those two sons of Aaron that did it wrong but this is this is a, a divine service this is service to a deity this is worship, and 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 uh, Archer, and, and Archer uh, 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 Gleason Archer gets it right. Look at his commentary on Daniel, Volume Seven, the Expositor's Bible Commentary. He gets it right. You have to get it right, friend. People's souls are hanging in the balance. Their their souls are hanging in the balance, and, and I could go on and on and on talking about this stuff. But I, I, I'm just trying to get one point across. Not selling Bibles, but telling all the Messianic Jews, go back to the drawing board and, 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 and do a revision of your, of your translation and get it right. Because uh, when, when David Stern, it was in his complete uh, uh, Jewish Bible, uh, when he gets to uh, James uh, and he talks about merit and Abraham having merit, that is a complete, listen, Jonathan Edwards would throw the Bible uh, right in the garbage. That would be the biggest mistake. Look at Romans chapter 4. Abraham was a, uh, this, is, this is where Judaism goes wrong. Uh, Abraham was a, an idol worshiper. He didn't know God. God graciously changed his status his legal status in court, he credited him with righteousness. Mm -hmm. So here I am in this subway and all these people are, are banging on the door and uh, screaming and wanting to get out. And, and, and I didn't know whether the guy had an AK-15, whether he was in the first car, I think we were like in the 10th car, whether he was working his way toward us. And all the time, this, this subway is going very slow between Canal Street and DeKalb, uh, about uh, maybe five miles an hour, giving this guy all the time in the world to, to kill us. And, uh, and you know what? I had a peace that passes all understanding. My friend, if you will get yourself an Orthodox Bible and meditate on it, you can have peace with God. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. 
You can get right with God. You can have peace with God. You will never have peace as long as you think you're trying to earn merit with God. It doesn't happen. It, it, it can't happen. It won't happen. So we finally get into the station at DeKalb. And the doors come open. And everybody rushes out onto the platform and starts running up the steps. And along comes this policeman very slowly. What's going on? Nobody seems to know what he looks like. The people that, uh, that saw him, they, they ran for their lives. And he easily just melted into the crowd and, uh, and escaped to terrorize people on, on another day. But this is a, a little story, my friend, to show you that you need answers. You need orthodox, straight Right answers from God about everything. And the translator has a moral obligation to give those answers to you by doing all the homework necessary. Somebody might say, well, I, I don't have 30 years to do what Goebel did. Well, I'm sorry. Get somebody else who does have 30 years to do it. Lord, we pray right now in Yeshua's name that you will do something in our day with the Hasidim with the ultra-Orthodox, with the Jews, with the non-Jews. Oh God, we pray for Bible translators all over the world that they'll get the work done right. And we'll give you all the praise. Amen.